Do you have a false idea about these things? You've really shown me what it really is. You did that for me as well. We've had mm. conversations about people like William Blake. Mm. Um, you know, the information you've explained to me, and it's, it's amazing. Isn't it? Can you go into it a little bit about uh, the seven... Some universe. Um, oh, yeah. that. Well, that's coming in the in another um, part of the Age of Manipulation series. But Blake was a man who. Uh, remember, in the last section, we start talking about the inner world. Mm. He was an expert on that. He was a champion of that, and he, in his work, uh, he was a poet primarily. So his work is a little bit difficult to decode because it's not quite, you know, linear. And then he wrote many books in which they're they're apparently his little dramatis persona, his characters appear to change throughout the books, making it even more complicated. But basically what he did was he characterized uh, uh, aspects of consciousness, like the reason of man he, he made into a god called Urizen, right? And the heart you know, it has a specific, specific deity, and the body, Tharmas, from the word uh, thermal, mm. right? Tharmas is a god, Los is the heart, reverse of the word Saul, and he has uh, Jerusalem he took from the Bible, but it's not a place, it's a female. A female goddess who's actually going to be responsible at the end days for uh, freeing everyone, bringing people back to uh, spiritual uh, unity or whatever you want to call it. So, and then Blake had a very elaborate in his early works of uh, the fall of man, of how that had actually happened through four stages basically. And strangely, his theories pre cues Jung. Now, as a matter of fact, for those who are really, really into that subject, Jung borrowed almost everything that he knew from Nietzsche. This is not well known, right? Freud borrowed a lot from Nietzsche and Schopenhauer, but Jung borrowed a lot from from uh, from Nietzsche, and also apparently, in my opinion, borrowed a hell of a lot from William Blake, because Blake's uh, descent of spirit from what he referred to as the Edenic realm was in a fourfold way, mm. just in the same way that you have Jung's quaternity of thinking, feeling, intuition, and the other one, you know, a sensation. So God, when he fell, and God's name was Albion, just means the White One. Like the white cliffs of Dover, the you know Albion, the England, pure white light. Pure white light. Yeah, he falls very much in a sort of sort of cabalistic, stripped down cabalistic way, where God falls, smashes himself on the rocks of reality or the the material, and splits into four parts. Now you gotta be you know you're gonna have a hard time proving me that Young didn't just take that right out of Blake, you know. So uh, and and these four individual parts become separate individuals. They're, and then, strange, another thing happens is that those individuals are all, I think, masculine, if I'm not mistaken, and they divide themselves because the fall is so drastic that they split. And so now you have eight. And when the first four split, uh, they split into what's called an emanation, which is a feminine half of their split. Mm. So Albion falls, divides into four. The four Zoas, from the Greek living being, divide themselves into a feminine half, which is called an emanation. And then I think they can even split again into 16th into what's called a specter, which is more the shadow side, side of everyone, you see? Although on Blake, Blake always used to turn things around a lot, and it turns out that sometimes the demonic side of us, the specter side, is actually a liberator. It turns out to be a form of liberator. So it's very complex iconography. And so this incredible thing goes on. We have 16 court cards in the tarot. We have 16 em you know, emanations from Blake. So there's lots of uh, incredible uh, connotations there. And the man was really basically saying that um, all of these uh, uh, individual uh, aspects of consciousness, of a singularity, go out and have their myriad experiences in the creation. In reality. In reality. And then one day, from some amazing event, the marriage of heaven and hell, you know, when Albion awakes, uh, they come back again and unify. And, um, and then even behind those theories that he had, there's even a more fantastic tale. Very esoteric, and we'll be dealing... It's the it's the backbone of one of the future talks. I use his metaphysics, in other words, to back up some of my own theories, to really make it you know adamantine. But uh, I'm still working on that, so it'll be down the line. Age of manipulation four.